Well, welcome to Cambridge uh, for another Howard's Orchids video. You'll notice that I'm wearing a thick jumper and that's because if you look outside, we're having a really cold spell here in Cambridge at the moment with um, nighttime temperatures that are down to minus five, even minus six, which is very unusual and it's also been going on for quite a long time. Even in here, with a bit of additional heating, the temperature has been dropping some nights to around um, 12, 13 centigrade, which is lower than I would normally expect in here. Anyway, I thought um, for this episode, which is um, sort of mid-December now, um, we'd have a quick look around and see what's um, going on and give you some sort of general impressions about how the greenhouse works in the winter. Um, what there is that's of interest and the th plants that I treasure the most. So I'll start off with the warmest side of the greenhouse, um, which is this side, which is on the side of our house. Um, and you can see that down underneath the bench, there's a sort of metal grill, a sort of Victorian style, which has some big cast iron radiators which run off the central heating from the house just to provide some sort of gentle uh, warmth under the bench. There's also a sort of tubular electric strip heater which runs along under the bench and that's controlled by a timer over here to come on just during the day to give the temperature a sort of bit of a lift during the day. And over here, you can see I've just had to bring in an additional uh, little sort of oil-filled radiator to provide a bit of extra warmth um, as it's so cold. And then, in addition, um, because over here on the shelf I've got my um, collection of species Phalaenopsis, um, apart from this one hybrid, which I'm not that keen on. And underneath the narrow shelves, there are these um, heated pads. You can just about see them running along under there. And then again, underneath the bench, there are two more. And they just provide a bit of extra warmth underneath, sort of bottom heat, uh, to use a sort of old fashioned greenhouse term, to keep it um, a little bit warmer. Up here, you can see that there's a maximum minimum thermometer, which is one of the most useful devices to keep a check on what the conditions are. And you can just about see from this that the minimum temperature, even when it's been really cold over here, has been 15 centigrade, which is 60 Fahrenheit. And that's okay for these Phalaenopsis, and you can see they're actually quite happy. This is um, Phalaenopsis testraspis alba, which has actually just come into bloom. You'll see that most of them are grown so that the, any water can fall off the leaves because you have to be incredibly careful with these low temperatures that you don't get water damage. And I'm afraid to say that a few nights ago there was a bit of moisture just remaining on this leaf and then overnight you get this happening, which is really um, irritating. But um, accidents do happen and the rest of the plant is fine. But of course, Phalaenopsis leaves last for several years, so once you get these sort of um, disfiguring marks on the leaves, you're stuck with them for a long time. Anyway, never mind. And then if I pan the camera around to the other side of the greenhouse, this is where I've got um, the majority of the sort of intermediate growing orchids. I have some sort of movable benches on casters, which is very convenient. And then there's a bench over here against the wall, sort of mirror image of the other side of the greenhouse. And lots of things hanging up, things that need more light and a little bit more warmth, because of course there's quite a big difference in temperature through the air between being right down near the floor and being right up where they get um, the warmth and air. And then just going to the other end of the greenhouse and looking back.
This is where I've got quite a lot of my cool growing orchids because next to the glass and on this window ledge it's actually pretty chilly. It's been going down to about 10 centigrade during the night. But for these species that's absolutely fine, although it seems a bit chilly compared to the other orchids. And then this is looking back from the other end of the greenhouse. So there are the big masses of intermediate growing orchids over here, um, with lots of orchids hanging up. And then the warmer side of the greenhouse over here. And this is the door to the kitchen. In previous videos, I've pointed out that I'm really keen on scented orchids. And what I've tried to do is make sure that throughout the year, there are a range of orchids which all provide a really beautiful scent to the greenhouse at all times of the year. At the moment, the real star performer is this um, Zygopetalum hybrid. Uh, I don't know the name because it didn't come with a name from the person who, I, who gave it to me, but it is one of the most beautifully scented Zygopetalums I've ever come across. It's been out in flower now for at least a month. The flowers are incredibly long lasting and they have the huge advantage that they are beautifully sort of scented of, I suppose you'd say, hyacinths, even when it's really chilly, which is a real advantage. So it doesn't have to be a sort of sunny, uh, relatively warm morning to appreciate the scent. And then over here, um, this is Prosthecia garciana, which I've included in a previous video a while back. And this has the most beautiful, spicy scent imaginable. One of my favourite orchids for scent. Um, doesn't fill the greenhouse with scent in the same way that the Zygopetalin does, but you only have to come near it and you can smell it. It has also been in flower now for ooh, five, maybe six weeks. The flowers are very long lasting. The first flowers that came out have finished now and they can be picked off. But this is just about at its peak now. You can see it's got lots of flowers on all the new growth that developed last year. And there's even one, oh, it's just here. I noticed one here with a few fresh buds um, still to come. So this is one of my favourite orchids for scent at this time of the year in the winter. Flowers regularly, always, and long lasting. And then, and then over here on the um, end of this bench, this is Bulbophyllum elasinotum far dark. Far dark because, as I've shown in a previous video, the new foliage has a beautiful um, purple sort of tint to it when it first comes out. And this is a fantastic orchid. Not all bulb phylums smell. In fact, only a few are really scented. And some of them smell really disgusting. But this one is one of the most beautiful um, scents. This smells distinctly of pineapples. And that's not just me. I've asked um, Fiona, my wife. She says the same instantly. You can see it's produced um, a mass of flowers this year. I think possibly the best ever flowering. There's lots around there, there's more here, and there's more to come. In fact, there are some buds that are really only just developing, so it's going to produce flowers for probably two months at least, I would say. This is the first flower spike that came out, and I can now just sort of gently strip the old flowers off to tidy it up. But this has a fantastic, really distinctive, unusual pineapple scent for orchids. And you can see it's quite a big plant. My aim has really been to grow a few orchids that I think are really good value for money and have a beautiful scent and allow them to grow on to be quite big plants so that you can really appreciate the scent that you get from a sort of multitude of flowers. The other month I did a video looking at some of my many miniature orchids and this 
proved very popular, uh, attracted a lot of views, and I think quite a lot of new subscribers as well, which is nice. Um, so I thought I'd just have a look at a few more of my miniature orchids. And I've got two that are flowering for me for the first time, which is marvellous. This is Isabella pulchella, which lives over in the cool bit by the window. And this is a um, delightful little um, species that, as you can see, I've got it on this um, bit of um, gorse bush branch, which it seems to like. You can see that the roots adhere to it very nicely and find their way around it. This is the first time that I've had it flowering and I'm really pleased. They're really delightful little tiny little flowers. They don't open very fully. Uh, they seem to last so far about two weeks, maybe more, uh, but I'm not quite sure yet. This gets sprayed uh, most days, uh, so basically I try to keep it uh, cool and moist. And it has this climbing habit, so um, that's really why I mounted it on here, so that it can sort of go where it wants. This one has got to the top, so I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do when it gets to there. Try and sort of um, coil it round. And then maybe if it goes off the top, you could cut it and then bring another bit down. And then another little um, species orchid, which um, again is flowering for me for the first time. Um, a friend of mine who's a keen orchid grower gave me just a little tiny section um, two or three years ago, which I mounted onto this bit of um, sort of composite bark. And it took a little while to get going, but this year it's really um, got going well. As you can see, the name Angraecum erectum, it is another of these sort of climbing species orchids, which can be a little bit to manage because you kind of run out of room at the top. And the flowers, I hope you can see, they're really beautiful, tiny little um, angricoid type flowers with a, you probably can't see it, a long um, sort of um, tube that contains the nectar. And they're sort of pinky, sort of creamy sort of colour. And there's more to come here. I haven't smelt it yet. You, being an angraecum, you would expect it to be moth pollinated and therefore uh, scented in the evening. But um, this lives over in the sort of warmer section and it's probably an orchid that likes it a bit sort of on the warmer side. So whether I'll get any scent from it or not, I don't know. Anyway, I'm very pleased that it's flying and growing really well. And um, a, a couple of episodes ago, I showed you this, which is Angraecum disticum, which I bought as much for the beautiful foliage as for its flowers. And now, at the same time, I also bought this one, which is Dendrobium uh, leonis, which also is grown partly for its flowers, but probably more particularly for its um, foliage. It produces these small little flowers right at the ends, repeatedly, um, over a long period at intervals through the year. But as a miniature orchid that looks good, as well as having um, flowers, it's really quite an interesting orchid species to grow. Yes, I must show you this one um, whilst I'm here. This is Trichopogon equigenera dream. It's a hybrid between two species orchids, two different genera actually, hence the sort of, sort of made up um, name of Trichopogon. It produces a flowering stem that flowers successively. So this is the second flower, which is now finished. The first flower has, um, long since uh, dropped off. This is the flower that's open now. Beautiful, really exquisitely marked little flower. And there's another one coming here. Whether it will produce another one, I don't know. It doesn't look like it. Anyway, so this is a beautiful little orchid um, from South um, America, uh, from the famous nursery in, in Ecuador, um, Equigenera. This is a micro miniature orchid. You can just about see the flower there. 
are really tiny. And this is a Trisotella species. I don't know what species it is. It was just sold as a Trisotella um, species. I've had it many years, and this is a division. In the summer, um, there was, it had, after many years, it had formed quite a big plant, and it was more or less sort of forming off its bark mount. So I carefully divided it into little bits and mounted them on some fresh little bits of cork with this fine elastic to hold it on and just a little tiny pad of um, New Zealand's sphagnum moss to give it a bit more moisture to keep it going until it rooted properly. But the Trisotellas are delightful little orchids amongst the miniatures. This is Sophronitis um, cernua. Now it's called um, Catlia um, cernua because they um, did a name change, unfortunately. This is another South American species. Tiny little orangey red flowers. I have never managed to grow this very well. This is the first time I've actually had it flowering. I was looking at a back issue of a orchid journal and somebody who had exhibited it at a show said that he keeps it hanging up in the apex of his greenhouse, which suggested to me it likes the extra light and the air. And of course, in South America, they tend to grow um, on trees. Forest isn't dense and jungly, but sort of sparse and sort of scrubby. So they get a full blast of moist air and lots of sun. And this year, it seems to have done reasonably well. But a delightful little um, species orchid. Now, before I go, there's um, something else I wanted to say. And that is in the sort of this bench under here, where it's relatively shady, cool, and actually gets some drips, condensation drips, off the um, sort of overhanging roof of the greenhouse. I keep my um, dendrochelums. And these are all now coming beautifully into growth. They come to life in the winter. And these will all, or almost all of them, will produce new growth and then a flower um, out of the center of them. And the dendrochelums, and I've got three different uh, variations on the dendrochelum glumaceum uh, species. They are all beautifully scented. They produce a mass of lots of little tiny flowers, which absolutely really fill the greenhouse with scent. So this provides me with something to look forward to every year at about sort of Christmas time, and then coming into January, February, and just about into March when they're in flower over quite a long period. But the interesting thing that I wanted to make is that they do grow beautifully under there where it's cool and really quite damp and sometimes a bit sort of um, affected by drips off the roof, which most orchids would really hate, such as the Phalaenopsis I showed you earlier. And then uh, one of my subscribers was asking about uh, Dendrobium kingianum. I have two uh, Dendrobium kingianums. This is one of them. It's a bit of a monster now. And just a few days ago, this was still hanging up outside. Last winter, it was much, um, it was really a mild winter, and they stayed outside all winter. I didn't bring them in at all. They're virtually hardy, even in this part of the world. Um, but I had to bring in this one in this time because um, it's been so cold. They tend to produce kikis occasionally. And um, she was saying that she has produced a lot of kikis. Now, they tend to produce more kikis, I think, in my experience, when they're being grown a bit too warm and maybe a bit too dry. So if you have a Dendrobium kingianum, and they are really a very reliable and easy orchid to grow, um, and you get a lot of kikis, I would try putting it outside. Um, that's if you live in this country. So that for the summer, if you put it, hang it up or place it somewhere where it's cool and semi-shade, they should really love it. This has produced masses of growth this year. Um, 
just outside here where it lives in the summer. Um, it's a little bit shady, so I don't expect to get as many flowers as I would do normally. But you can just about see the typical dendrobium. The flower spikes appear right at the tips of the new and the older growths. So they do reflower on both the new and the old canes. I don't think I've got many or any kikis this year, but I have had in previous years. And I have tended to get more kikis when I haven't been growing it as happily as this year. And then this is another one that I've got a, a much, um, they do vary a lot in their sort of habit and their size. And this is a much sort of smaller, more petite growing one. You can see in this case, this has produced a kiki from there. And there's a kiki here, which has actually already started to produce some roots. And then of course, when they've got a few more roots, you can detach them and um, pot them up or mount them. And they do make very good mounted orchids. And if you're thinking of expanding out of growing orchids in pots uh, and uh, into mounted orchids, Dendrobium kingianums make a very good subject to start with because they really are quite tough. Uh, they will take quite a lot of neglect. Um, and if they're grown well, they will produce a really beautiful um, mounted orchid. This one, yes, this one has got the flower spikes again just developing at the top here. So they'd be flowering in sort of February, March, April, early spring. So that's Dendrobium kingianum. And if you are watching and you do have them, if you go in a sort of climate like we have here in Britain, definitely put them outside for most of the year and then just bring them in if it's really cold. That's uh, about it for this episode. I wish you all the best for Christmas and um, look forward to seeing you in the next video, hopefully.